This is Camrig 1.1, a shiny brand new utility for Animator's Toolkit, inspired by an AE script by Jersey Draws Up or Malty called Simple Camera Rig, which I highly suggest checking out. Like Malty's script, this new utility creates a powerful rig that makes smooth cinematic camera movement a painless process, and most importantly makes your workflow easier by putting all of the controls in one place. In the past I would have to go through the steps of creating a hierarchy of helper objects which I would parent my camera to and then take the time to launch the parameter editor and wire all of those controls up. Well my maxers, that shit got old. Camrig does all of this for you instantly and I will show you how right now. I'll go over what it does exactly and then I'll walk through how to use it. Here we go. First to get the camera rig, fire up ATK and click this adorable little chest. A list should pop up and you'll find it there. On the camera rig rollout, there are options to control things like camera type, name, layer where you'll find the components, and preferences to scale the simplicity that meets your needs. Most of the functionality is enabled by default, but right now I'll stick to the fundamentals and use the basic preset to dial back the settings. Now that those are set, clicking the create button drops a new camera rig into the scene, centered on the selected object. In Outliner, a scene manager which I highly suggest, you'll see that a hierarchy of helper objects were created and named. These helpers are the internal organs of the rig and drive what's happening behind the scenes. More about those later. By default, the active viewport switches to the rig camera, and the helper with all of the controlling parameters, or BOUS, is selected. Let's check those out. Heading controls the horizontal orbit around the target. Pitch, the vertical orbit. Bank, the camera rotation, or roll. And Track, the distance between the camera and target. These four main parameters alone allow you to do some interesting stuff. For instance, I'll go down to frame 100. Enable auto key, set these tangents to smooth, start by zeroing out the heading, so I'm right in front, set the pitch to 90, so I'm right on top of this thing, maybe center it up and zoom in with the track, alright, that's too damn close, so I'll zoom back out, alright, so maybe I'll throw uh, some spin on this thing, make it a little bit more interesting. Alright, I'll shorten this up. I'm going to start from the top, so I'll select these keys and reverse them. Alright, then go down to 80, bring the heading in front, set the pitch so I'm level, and I'll go ahead and uh, zoom into this lens of possibility right here. Shift this over. Bring it in a little bit more. All right. Let's check that out. So my tangents are still looking pretty rough, so I'm calling our friend Kronos to help me with those tangent lengths. Bring it down to half. Let's see how that's going. All right. Maybe this mid key here, whoop, I'll uh, take and I'll set the tangents to about 80%. So they hang out a bit longer. All right. So that's just a quick example of how you can achieve some interesting results with just four parameters. In this next sample, I'll show you how the other controls expand on this even further. So in this scene, I have what looks like to be Gumby's motorcycle in some type of abandoned warehouse that stashes giant camera rig logos under heat lamps. And this time, I'll be using a camera rig with some more controls enabled, and I could check these individually, or I can go to the preset menu and choose from one of these scopes. So I'll choose full, and that'll check everything down to focal shift, which I want, and I'll make sure my bike is selected. I'll hit create. Now that that's centered, I'll start moving stuff around. Bring this to the rear. Just the heading, just the pitch. Bring this up. Maybe before I go any further, I'll increase the FOV to a wider shot. All right. Go back to tweaking this track setting. 
And then now I'll push this target a little further by the rear. And I'll go to the end of the timeline at frame 100, and I'll start adjusting this Y speed. You can see now that the rig is moving, and I want to place it just right in front where I want it to be at the end of the timeline when the animation is through. So you can see that moving now. No keyframes. And I go down to the end and I'll start adjusting these other settings. Like the heading, maybe the pitch. I'll bring it down on the Z. The heading a little bit more. Maybe add some bank in there. All right. So you can see now how you can create a nice camera crawl with just uh, adjusting four parameters. No keys. All right. I'll move on, create another rig, place this uh, around the wheel hub, Move it down, Let's exit out of that view real quick, all right, place it right there, go back, all right, I'll just bring this in track and I'll put some bank on it like that go down here and I'll pull out with the track speed and I'll counter the bank like that and there you go and I'll create another camera do this time go from side to side and let's see, I'll adjust the heading. Bring this right there. Go down to frame 100. Control the X speed. All right. The pitch. The heading. Counter the heading over here with the speed. Pitch down lower. All right. I'll add some bang. Bring this down. Down here. Counter that bank. There you go. My nice side movement. And I'll create another rig. And. Uh, you can do some effective animation without any keyframes, but I want to show you how the speeds complement the keyframes in a nice way. So let me just line this up, take the heading, just this pitch, go back into this engine here, bring up frame 40, enable auto key, bring this out, all right. Just the heading, maybe pitch, like that, maybe just the bank, all right, so I'll uh, put some heading speed on there, you can see now, that continues on, I'll bring this down a little bit. Actually, I'm creating heading keys right now. These are uh, completely keyable as well. So you could stop, start, begin, heading speed anywhere you like. Increase that right there. Let me bring this back out again. All right. So there it is. It's a nice continuation going. And uh, another thing I want to show you is the focal shift. And before I show you that, actually, I'll show you this select sub rollout. And this allows you to uh, select your different rigs and view them and select the components of the rigs, like the target or the camera or the controlling object or boss. And uh, let me just select this first one I have here. All right. 
So you can see the target is right beside the engine. Now, a cool thing about this uh, control, the focal shift, is it'll keep everything sharp in the center and blur everything out on the sides. Uh, so it's basically controlling your depth of field. So I'll go ahead and select the camera, enable the depth of field. There we go. And now you'll see the background and some of the foreground blur out. And you could have a lot of fun with that. And another thing I wanted to show you uh, was the shake. Let's see? So I'll, I'll create another rig here. This gives you a little bit of warmer of an effect here with the camera. Pull back this track. And actually, I didn't create any shake on this rig, so I'll go ahead and uh, sample these settings. By the way, you can sample the current settings to the rig by hitting this uh, little ink dropper. And uh, this time I'll enable position shake. And there you go, and I'll hit create. Then now, I created a rig in the same place, but with shake. And there you go, works with all the other parameters. And you could get a nice handheld look with that. So, that's Cam Rig. And uh, I encourage you to download the latest release and check it out. And thanks for watching. Show you the fucking heading speed. You can see it turn. Wow. See that script's leaking out into the real world, motherfuckers.